You're listening to The Big Lift, the podcast of Web Trends Optimize, the CRO solution that enables marketers and developers to maximize the ROI on their digital properties. Web Trends Optimize is a powerful, feature rich, and easy to use solution, all delivered within a fixed price contract with no additional cost for increased functionality ever. During these podcasts, we meet some of the key influencers within the marketing and conversion world to understand their roles and examine their challenges. Today, I'm talking to Richard Chapman, Head of Experimentation at Digital Experience Agency 26. 26 help organizations to maximize their digital assets by utilizing user base and traffic behavior to deliver a testing program based on robust data-led hypotheses. We discuss how companies should build and maintain a CRO culture within their business to achieve quicker growth, encourage creativity, and ultimately nurture more engaged customers. Rich, um, I noticed that you've been at, um, well, you've been in CRO experimentation for just over 11 years and you're now at 26. Can you tell me a little bit about um, A, your background and B, who are 26? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so, yeah, as uh, you said, I've been in uh, experimentation uh, pretty much since its infancy. It was just sort of getting going when I uh, discovered it. There was sort of the sort of initial technology coming onto the digital uh, landscape at that point. Um, and I was tasked by the MD of my first agency to set up a CRO department um, because it had piqued my interest and I'd started to advise clients on it. Um, so, yeah, I've essentially watched it grow uh, from strength to strength. Back then I had to explain what the acronym CRO stood for, which I don't have to do so much these <laughs> days. Um, uh, although still having to explain experimentation uh, quite heavily uh, and how it benefits bis- businesses. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've pretty much gone from agency to ag- agency uh, during my career path. I'm now, now at my third, um, implementing a CRO uh, and experimentation uh, department for 26. Um, who are a uh, digital experience agency uh, doing all the sort of usual channels, uh, paid search, uh, paid media, uh, digital PR, SEO, uh, and of course, uh, CRO as well. The idea of today is actually you wrote a blog post um, entitled Why You Need CRO Culture in Your Business to Achieve Quicker Growth. So I think that's a fascinating topic because obviously... Lots of people are stumbling into CRO for the very first time and therefore they're looking at being able to grasp hold of anybody who's got knowledge of being able to implement it for the first time. So if I may, I'd like to talk with you today about those companies who are moving into CRO, more of a startup um, CRO environment, and therefore are going to come across some of the things that you highlighted quite eloquently in your in your blog post. So the first thing is, if you're going to build a a CRO mindset, let's call it that way. You have to start somewhere. So who is the right person inside an organization to be the champion in the business for this? I think um, the right person is always, is always going to be the key to it. And in my experience at the moment, there is, there's always the one person that, that sticks out within a business that is trying to champion CRO um, and more broadly experimentation and that way of thinking and that that mindset. Um, that person comes in, in my experience, within different forms. Um, so it's really about the person themselves, their personality and um, what it is that they're trying to achieve. Um, so they 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 can be somebody quite senior within the business uh, that is looking to drive change within the teams beneath them, or it could be somebody that's just starting out within their career that has actually discovered CRO uh, or experimentation or has played around with the technology. So it really comes down to um, the sort of character that they are and their acceptance for wanting to learn and actually experiment and actually. Uh, the willingness to fail um, and not be scared about that. That is the person um, that is always the one that's sort of banging the CRO drum to say, hey, we need to do this because it is it is a good idea to learn about our audience in a, a deeper way rather than just guessing change um, based on people's uh, experience or singular opinions. So that was a very interesting comment you made. People who are prepared to fail. Yeah, 
<laughs> because if you talk to any any new recruit in the business, you can't go in and say, oh, part of your job description is actually you're going to fail about doing things and hopefully we'll get some insight into that. How yeah. do you sell that to your boss, the fact that experimentation relies to a degree on not just the successes but the failures as well? So there was a brilliant term that I heard at a conference recently, which I wish I'd known 10 years ago, um, uh, and that term is loss prevention, um, which is a really good way of selling um, how you fail to learn um, at the experimentation game. So the way that you can kind of pitch it financially, which is where we always end up in terms of kind of selling CRO either to a business or helping somebody internally within a business to uh, to actually champion CRO and experimentation is is to say that if you change the way that you operate currently, that um, it, you'll be much better off because you will find the ways um, that don't work for you and it will prevent you from um, putting those changes live onto your website and to your audience um, for, then, for then things to go wrong, which are obviously going to harm your revenue that is uh, coming in. So you would say that... <laughs> How can I put this? That failing is something that's good and should be, I won't say encouraged, but should not be criticised. Absolutely, yeah. I think that that really is the kind of uh, keystone to it to um, it all is that acceptance of we aren't going to win everything that we do, and in fact, most um, most experiments do fail. Um, you know, your average win rate that is based upon really good data and a really strong hypothesis is only around. 35 to 40 percent depending which data set that you look at so you've got to have that acceptance in place um, and it's that discovery piece of going actually the decisions that we're making here they may not be right um, and it's and it's that culture uh, and that mindset that is completely different to the normal way of working which is we're going to go through this process we're going to make these designs we're going to get the, the developers to build this page or this app and then we're going to launch it um, and it's going to be successful and that is what everybody believes um, because you've done the work um, you've done your job um, and who are we to come in and say actually it might not work um, you, you might want to test that so you do need to have have a bit of kid gloves here when you're kind of speaking to people about introducing experimentation and conversion rate optimization to them because you're effectively going to grade their work um, and their ideas each time you run an experiment. Um, and so you've got to break those barriers down for people to accept that and accept the change to say, we are going to re kind of review this and, and have a lot, lot more scrutiny behind changes now um, to make sure that what we do put live and what, what we do spend money on uh, is going to be successful. So that's great if you happen to be a director of the business, a marketing manager or something, a senior marketing manager or something like that. Yeah. But if you're, you know, the guy that's just come into the business to be able to run experimentation, it's a big ask to be able to challenge the perception of people that says CRO has seen to be a return on investment. And therefore, yeah. what we're doing is got to, has got to pay for itself. And they see that in extra sales, extra revenue, whatever it might be. So as an as a boss it's great because you can actually bring that message down from you down to the team but if you're just one member of the team that's a big ask to be yeah. able to get people who might be have been doing building websites the developers to telling telling them actually just don't do that we need to do, do it this way or we need to be using experimentation to prove what you're doing is the right thing that's a that's an awkward conversation surely it is very awkward yeah um so when you're kind of starting out within this and let's say you are that kind of younger member or less experienced person within with, within your team um, the way that I found to kind of break the barriers down then is only through demonstration so you have to go take baby steps to get there to say hey do you mind if I install this piece of software as a trial and can I run this one or two tests just to kind of test this thing out so in the back of your mind you might already have the I really want to do this thing as a, a wider project and then a wider piece within the business in the future, but you've got to demonstrate it to people first to get buy-in. So the, the trick with it is 
in that scenario, you have to get a winning test, um, which is e easier said than done when, when you're starting out. So you almost do need to get a bit luck lucky at uh, times because without the winning test in place, you can't demonstrate the return on investment value to the people that are higher up. And that is essentially what they are going to respond to. So I'm I'm kind of with you on the on the kind of how you can sell it into somebody, but we've all talked and we all know about these things called the hippo in the business, <laughs> the person with yeah. the highest paid person's opinion. Yeah, that surely must try to be influencing on what they think and convincing that person or those people because it's often more than one person that what you're trying to do makes sense. So. People that hold the purse strings um, generally respond best to data. So if you're in the scenario where uh, you can run a couple of tests, let's say um, you you can't demonstrate enough at this point to say, hey, can I, can I get a 12-month contract with a tech provider like WebTrends Optimize? Um, but you might be able to get a free trial. So you get a free trial. And that also demonstrates mm -hmm. to the hippo that you're thinking about yeah. cost and you're thinking about being cost effective. So that ticks a box it immediately. Um, then you need to get a winning test and demonstrate some sort of uplift from them and say, okay, I've run, let's say you've run five tests, you've failed four, but you've won one. So the one winner, hopefully, or, or it should, um, demonstrate enough value uh, to say, if we scale it up and model it up, then it might equal X. So can we proceed with this um, as a way of working going forwards? Um, so with a hippo that's a bit detached from the day-to-day, -day, that's fine and it'll work pretty well. The problem you, that you've got is there is another type that are very attached to their business and they are very um, sensitive to change, uh, especially if it is somebody that has created their own business from scratch. These are the more difficult ones to deal with, and, the, and it's more difficult to get the CRO culture uh, and experimentation culture in, in place because they're the ones that have always made the changes and they're the ones that have seen success from those changes. So as the point that I made in my blog post is who are we then to come in and say, hey, actually the decisions and ideas that you have actually should be checked and scrutinized through testing and experimentation. And it really can put noses out of joint um, when you describe this process to them, uh, because essentially what you're doing is removing power from them. The power to say, I've woken up this morning and I feel like coming in and I genuinely have had this said to, to me, why can't I come in and just make a change? Because it's something that I thought about um, this morning as, as I was getting ready for work. Um, and the problem is, they, they've gone from a very small business that they that they made out of their you know their 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 garage or something to that effect to a very very big national European worldwide etc. Um, and the fact is that actually you've got to change the way that you think now because the small changes that you make equal a much much greater impact um, in terms of revenue because the numbers that you're dealing with now are that much higher. Okay, so we've now got the, the kind of the acceptance that it's all working well and it's um, doing a, a great job. What is it with regard to the next stages? How many people, for instance, would you need inside your organisation to, um, to run a successful CRO environment? There's a number of factors that that depends on. So team size really comes down to the size of the business and the size of the websites and the amount of traffic that you've got to shoot at. Um, so let's say that you're a big e-commerce e business uh, with selling tens of thousands of, of products. You've got a big site. You could easily have a team of uh, five to ten people that is a mixture of analysts that are constantly analysing data for you, analysing test results, feeding the strategy from that, uh, and coming up with new hypotheses that you can then test. Um, somebody has to make those those tests, so you need developers. Um, whether you have that externally sourced or internally sourced, um, and then you need people that actually run the strategy uh, from the business side of it as well. So you've kind of got three core areas that you need to tick. So let, let's say you've, you've got a lead generation business uh, that has a much smaller site. It's SaaS. It's only 20 pages. 
Um, it's a lot lower traffic, but one conversion for that business can mean uh, a massive increase in revenue for them. So, so in that mm-hmm. respect, you actually you could do it with one or two people uh, because you haven't got so much to shoot at in terms of testing traffic. You haven't got so much to work on in terms of site size. Um, so that testing program for that business is going to be minuscule compared to the big e-commerce player. And presumably at that that kind of stage, you could be wondering whether you do it in-house or you look to an agency to either help you on the way or to actually take on board some of this. Um, I would always look for an agency, um, <laughs> uh, being slightly biased, um, for the simple reason <laughs> that um, the agency people are going to have a lot of experience, especially if you're just starting out in CRO and experimentation. Those teams that are set up within agencies will have looked at numerous different sites, numerous different industries and verticals. Um, They will have run likely hundreds, if not thousands of experiments themselves, and they know how to get things done. Secondly, they can advise you very well on process and how things work to get things going quickly. Um, Agencies like Pace, um, it's why I work within them. Um, And a lot of the time, I want to move faster than, than the client business will let me. Um, which is a bit of a frustration. Um, But yeah, um, but that is my kind of, you know, biased view um, of that. But uh, building an in-house team that can really get behind your brand and understand your audience at at a bit of a deeper level certainly has has its uh, merits and value. We've we've kind of talked about bringing in CRO first of all and and trying to build a culture of CRO Mm -hmm. or experimentation. And we just mentioned there about having an agency. That's a lot of change that's going on at one one time. And you actually just mentioned, actually, you like to work at pace. And obviously, the pace that you want to work at as an agency may not be the pace that you're working or the, the end company wants to work at. How do you kind of overcome that, I suppose, difference in, I suppose, acceleration you know they might be quite slow you might be quite fast you've got lots of ideas and things like that and they they're not quite geared up to it yet how do you overcome that resistance to change that would that that would cause um a lot of patience to start with um you definitely need that uh, when you're onboarding somebody that's kind of new to it which is a lot of the case at the moment because at, at the minute we've got a lot of businesses that have put a toe in the water um in terms of CRO and experimentation, because there was a free tool available to everybody, which was Google Optimize, which Mm -hmm. is now Sunset. Um, So we've got a lot of these businesses that are trying to transition uh, to somebody like yourselves, which is a much bigger bigger piece of kit uh, to understand um, uh, for very good reasons. So you have to be patient. So the, the most effective way that I've found so far is to drive them through a process that is broken down stage by stage so that they they can see where it starts, they can see the end point and they understand what happens in the middle of that piece by piece by piece. So you have to take them on a journey from step one to step two, step three, step four. And eventually you arrive at a point where you've got the technology set up, you've got the process accepted and embedded within the business um, and you've got the, the key stakeholders within the business are all onboarded um, and are comfortable, um, and that is key, with what is going to happen uh, going forward. One of the things that this pace, this pace of acceleration, if you like, is I think we mentioned in our previous call about the um, the resistance to try to run before you can walk yeah. and have that persistence and patience. But in what we're trying to do with CRO, there's also a lot of excitement and exuberance yeah. about winning tests, return on investment. Yeah. Isn't that great? We've proved this. It was just something good idea. Now we've proved it's a good idea. Which one trumps one another? Is it patience and, and persistence or is it excitement and exuberance? I would edge patience and persistence, but you do need a bit of the other one as well. So um, I can kind of describe this through how we actually run CRO with clients so there's as you rightly say there's always that need to demonstrate return on investment fairly quickly um so in that respect you kind of go against your kind of standard way of doing CRO and experimentation which is 
very much a research hypothesis led way of testing. So you do a good amount of research, you look at your analytics data, you look at your visual intelligence data, you do some user polling, you pull all of this information together and you come up with a prioritized testing plan to say, right, we're going to attack this, we're going to attack this because these are where, where the data is telling us that there is problems. Conversely, that takes time. Um, so then you're into a trap of not being able to demonstrate ROI while you're running that first piece of analysis. So in the meantime, you ask the business, what have you wanted to test? What's your best hunch? Um, so you do say, take your best guess, which is not what we're after really within CRO. It is the whole point of it is that you remove the guesswork, right? Um, but at, at the very beginning to demonstrate some sort of testing results and also to help you grease the wheels of new process and new technology within a business, um, it is good to do some small quick fire tests, to kind of eke out any problems that we haven't thought of yet, get around those sort of new nuances that are uh, specific to each individual business and client, uh, but also to hopefully, uh, and it is guesswork still, uh, to get a winning test on the board that you can then start to um, get that ROI piece coming through. And that helps with the excitement and exuberance piece because you get testing live quickly and people get excited about it and they can see results and they can see data starting to come in within the platform. Do you think CRO and experimentation will actually stifle creativity? Um, I think opposite, really. I think that experimentation opens up more creativity because um, the amount of times that I have to brief a design to say, please bank all of your ideas as variants. So they get the, the opportunity to actually create lots of different versions of something now, rather than having to kind of stick to one, which is that they consider to be their best guess. Um, so I think people can be a lot more creative now. So let's say you're going to do a load of uh, content testing and you're going to write five or six different headlines. So a copywriter has license to be a bit more flamboyant, let's say, with some of those variations than they could have been previously. Uh, testing things like branding guidelines and tone of voice and seeing how it works for the business's uh, audience. Yeah, I can I can see the converse as well. I can see the, the, the bit about saying, well, actually, if I've got to test everything, then I'll only come up with two two ideas because I'll test one against the other. Yeah. As opposed to the fact that, you know, you want people to think actually whatever I'm, I've got in my head, I want to get that out. And I think part of your, your kind of stage plan is to be able to record things anyway to make sure you do have kind of ideas set, set to go after whatever you've done now um, to yeah. make it more successful. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely something within that, that that people do fear it a little bit because they believe that that creativity is going to be taken away. And what I try to demonstrate to them is actually that they get to feed it um, a lot more uh, because all of their ideas can go into a testing backlog uh, and actually can make it through to te be tested eventually rather than previously that have probably been stuck with actually only getting one or two of those through because there's a, a much more limited finite amount that you, you could push through to a live site whereas with a testing environment you can test a lot more different versions of, uh, of ways of doing things and the idea of the, that we've just talked about about getting things wrong or, or the idea of failing that's presumably quite a difference in in culture to be able to make people believe that it's okay to suggest something and it might not be the right or the winning test most people want to be able to come up with ideas and creativity that actually they think is going to be the winner um but to actually come up and say actually well i thought that but it's not good it doesn't work we're still learning from that aren't we definitely so yeah um and, and the more that you can involve people within the learning process the better um because you can look, even when you've got a winning test, there might be something negative actually with it that's like a 5% thing uh, within the data set. So let's say actually for 95% of the audience, this is brilliant, but this particular cohort didn't like it. And then if you flip that round on a losing test, there's always something there that is slightly positive that you can then pull out and go, well, actually this worked really successfully on this particular screen size or browser or, or um, particular group of uh, people. So there's always something that you can take from a losing test. So this is why we always hear the you know standard line now of why failing is good, um, mm -hmm. because we actually get to know what does work well within that. But it's obviously only the 
smaller part of that test. Is there a time limit, do you think, for trying to get this CRO culture in place? Is it something that, you know, rather than rushing at it, you say, well, actually, it's going to take three months or six months or whatever it might be. Do you have a kind of a time frame in mind to put in front of companies when you're um, pushing CRO? That's a good question. Not as a standard ballpark figure, no. Um, everybody's very, very different. So um, the larger the company, uh, and the more products and websites that they have, the more complex it is. So ob- mm-hmm. ob- obviously they take longer. So uh, I, I guess to answer the question effectively, I've had to give you examples. So I had a global organisation reach out recently um, that was just looking at moving into testing and experimentation, and they had branches of their business all around the world they had sort of like 200 100 different branches and it was our job or going to be our job to work with all those individual branches to make sure that they're all going to run testing for their region in the right way with the same processes uh, and the same tech stack but that takes a long time so that would probably be a six to twelve month project to get that up and running but let's say you've got a standard e- e-commerce business um, that uh, that has one site, you could probably do that within a quarter and do that within three months from installing the software, having enough meetings, uh, getting people around the table. And you can probably do that within three months as long as, you've, you, as, long as you haven't got somebody that is particularly resistant uh, to uh, CRO culture coming in. We're, we're getting too close to just over half an hour of, of conversation here. I think there's there's enough meat on the bones here for people sure. to take away. One of the things is, what's the first steps that somebody who's in an organisation that doesn't do CRO should do to be able to think, actually, this might be a good idea? How do they make that first move? The first move, I think, is to get a demo uh, of somebody like WebTrends, uh, of course, um, and try and prove that testing does work in a small way to start with. So that's always of benefit because people can see the numbers uh, and they they can see the value uh, within it. So if that's not available to you to do that, then you have to get people around the table. So usually step one of going into an organisation that, uh, that have never done it before, are very cold to it, you need to do some sort of open conversation style meeting at the very beginning where you say, okay, this is this is basically a whiteboard session. You brief them beforehand and say, this is what experimentation is and this is what it might mean for you, but we want your feedback and we want your opinion. So you've got to rub people's egos the right way, uh, basically, and and uh, make sure that they are they feel involved within the process. Um, and that they that they have a fair say and that they have a fair shout because you've got people like chief technology officers that have never seen testing software before and you suddenly tell them that we've got this piece of kit that we can change the website with at the drop of a hat and they go, excuse me, um, that exists? And we go, yes, it does. <laughs> um, so you have very innocent people here uh, that have never seen it or experienced it before. And then you've got IT uh, the IT department and all of the legal stuff that goes with that. You may have, you know, um, uh, particular standards and certifications that you've got to adhere to. Um, yeah, so you have to get people around the table and involved within the process to start with to say, this is what it is, this is how we're going to do it. The mistake is always, if you don't do that, then people are shocked um, and they get annoyed because you haven't involved them. So I find it's, it, it's a much smoother process that if you involve people from the beginning, although it's going to make you jump through more hoops, that you will get to the end a much smoother and actually a lot faster rather than it just being shut down. Rich, I, I think we've covered <laughs> quite a, a good a good area of, yeah. of things. I mean, one of the things that people are afraid of when they're entering into CRO for the first time potentially is calling somebody else's baby ugly yeah and by that I mean that what they've done before is is actually not good enough or they think they can do better or whatever might like that be and obviously with what we've discussed today I think we've we've overcome that in a very subtle and soft approach which which should work um, for, for many businesses starting out for the first time but 
Rich, thank you very much for your time. Um, it's been a good conversation. Um, hopefully there's plenty of companies out there who've decided that they're, they're going to go into optimization, CRO, whatever we like to call it, um, in much more concerted efforts now that um, Google ha- Optimized Program is no longer there. But thank you very much, and, and hopefully we'll speak again soon. Thank, thank you for having me. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thanks.